All right, what we've got here today is we're going to check this CAD cell relay, primary control, and make sure it's working properly. So this is a Honeywell, an older one, an R4184D1027. It's uh, a typical CAD cell control, other than it does not have here, there, maybe you can hear me better. Uh, it's a typical CAD cell control, except it does not have the thermostat terminals here at TT, so it's designed to go on a hot water boiler. But today I just want to check it out and make sure that it's working properly. So what I did is I turned the thermostat up so the boiler would turn on, and then I disconnected one of the wires going to the CAD cell, the eye that actually sees the fire, and uh, waited for its time period, and it locked out at approximately 45 seconds, which is normal for this particular control. It has a 45 second lockout time. So I've already confirmed that it locks out, so that's good. So now the other thing is I wanna check the CAD cell, make sure that it's seeing enough light, because that's how the whole control works. Before this, these controls, there used to be stack relays that would work off a of temperature. They were not reliable because they would soot up and it was a piece of bimetal and it just wasn't great technology. So the solid state control came out and it works off the principle where there's a eye that sees the fire and the eye is nothing more than a variable resistor. What I'm going to do now is test. There's the eye. Hopefully you can see it. It's right here. I'm going to pull that out. It's in a socket. It looks pretty good. You see that? Yeah. So that's that's the eye. So it's a really a resistor and it just varies based upon the light. When I was a kid long time ago. There used to be, uh, before radio control cars, there used to be a car and there was two of these mounted right on the hood, or on the roof, I'm sorry, and you had a flashlight and you would shine one. If you shined it on the right one, it would turn the wheels right. If you shined it on the left one, it would turn the wheels left. And if you shined it on both, it would make it go straight. So it was pretty cool. I wish they still had that car. Uh, so anyway, there's really no way to test this outside of it. I guess if you knew all the parameters you could at a certain amount of light, but we don't know how much light we have in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to check the resistance. So that's that yellow wire from the socket runs over here. All right, so I'm going to put it back. And the way to test it out is we're going to have to fire the burner and check the resistance. Okay. Now, one thing I, I mistake that a lot of people make is that when they get their tester, ohms, they put it on ohms, we're going to test the ohms, they will take the wire here and put the leads on and hold them with their fingers, you know, if these weren't screwed on, hold them with their fingers. What happens is that it's reading right through your body. So you shouldn't really do that. Either use test leads like this where you can clip on um, or better yet the clips in the probe so you take the wire off you clip onto it and yes if you add test leads it does change the ohms a little bit the reading but not enough where it's gonna affect anything so now that we get both of those clipped on like that all right now when I start this up it will come on and it'll run for 45 seconds and 30 to 45 seconds and it will shut off. Right now I'm reading with it off. I don't know if you can see that. It's 309, 310,000 ohms. All right. Now, recommendations on this, I believe if you read the Honeywell manual, they say anything under 1600 ohms, 1600 ohms is considered okay, seeing enough light. Now, there could be many reasons why it's not seeing enough light. It could be a dirty nozzle, plug, partial plugged up, or you're not getting enough flame. Uh, it could have too much air. The more air you give it, the less light, actually, you get out of it. So it could be really, really lean, which is not usually the case, but I have seen it. Um, a bad eye, or even a bad wire. When these wires get old, and they get hot, and over time, they start to heat up, and the resistance changes. So sometimes a, a bad socket or the wire, it's not uncommon to have to change that, which seems kind of weird, but yeah, it, it does happen. So now, a little trick. If you take a jumper and jumper out the terminals where F and F was, 
or the CAD cell, F for flame sensor. If I jump them both out now and I try to start it, it won't start because the control won't work if it thinks it's seeing light. It won't go into the ignition part of it. So what you do is you start it with it off and then as soon as it starts up, then you take and you jump her out and it'll continue to run. It won't lock out in safety. So what we're gonna do is it's already off on safety now. I'm gonna start it up, jumper it out so it continues to run, and then we're gonna check what the uh, ohms reading is. Okay. So right now, if you can see that, I have roughly 464, 65, ohms, which is excellent. Um, I would recommend that even though instructions say anything under 1600, I've seen 1600 and 1500 uh, actually continue to lock out and cause a nuisance. So uh, yeah, I, my rule of thumb really is if it's a thousand ohms or above, change it out. Uh, if it's a thousand ohms or under, you should be okay. So that looks really good. 438 ohms so we're good there so I'm just gonna take this jumper off one more time make sure it locks out again because I want it to turn off that's kind of how I was shutting it on and off there it goes we're good the wire feels good it's not too brittle there's no corrosion here no corrosion here a little bit of dust but no corrosion Put these back, polarity does not matter. Okay. And that pretty much concludes checking out our CAD cell relay for function and correct operation. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them on the comment below. Thank you for watching.